you've had a pretty big career. Um, just want to talk about your where's and when's and why and how you how you got here a little bit. Uh, how I'm here at <coughs> People's Art of Portland. <coughs> uh, well, I've been here in Portland for um, probably about 15 years on and off over the course of time and uh, we haven't really had a retrospective uh, poster show yet and this one pretty much covers most of the uh, most of the history of all those years you know starting here uh, as I'm working making flyers for all the rock bands that we found uh, playing in Portland uh, upon arriving here you know there's tons and tons of music and art and uh, I was a flyer artist when I moved here, and since then, it's uh, progressed greatly into you know full color um, printed editions and uh, piled up you know many many pieces over the years for lots and lots of bands. Um, so after all this time, uh, it was Jason pestered me mostly into uh, the <laughs> idea of having many what you'd, you'd call a retrospective, but it's kind of more just sort of an opportunity to show a lot of the pieces, by not by no means all of the pieces, um, but mostly uh, highlighting a lot of the just the, the last or rare prints that I've had uh, in my studio that rarely see the light of day, um, especially en masse. So here's a collection of mostly rarer prints or uh, the last of the, of the prints or and a lot of working pieces, lots of uh, sketches and artwork. Yeah, it's just not <clears throat> finished work, like you have total process. Yeah, not entirely. Mm -hmm. um, how many pieces are there total? Here, how many pieces are there total? Uh, close to 200. 200 pieces, which is quite With variants and sketches. And <clears throat> that is a lot of pieces. But it's yeah. by the, those, the prints here, like I say, they don't enca encapsulate every design that's been done. Um, but in seeing it all together, in the same way that uh, anytime you look back at your uh, history or your pile or your archives, uh, you're often uh, surprised by the evidence of how much work actually went into doing all this stuff. Uh, and often you can wonder, uh, why did I spend all of my time doing these particular things? And how much these time? Particular how things. much time I spent on it? I mean, just... <clears throat> um, I work like a lot of people, I work pretty much 24 hours a day uh, uh, thinking about it or working on it or, or contemplating it in one way or another. There's piles and piles and piles of uh, sketches and drawings and another part of the highlight of the show is some of the working pieces, the sketches and process pieces that, that uh, made up a lot of these things. And uh, I would say that even just the stuff in this show are nowhere near even half of, uh, half of one, half of one percent of all of the pieces of paper that are generated in doing the sketches and preliminary drawings and all the things that go into making all the, the poster pieces. And it's not always the same paper, like you, uh, I mean, you're caught drawing on just about anything a lot of times. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I couldn't, uh, I can't really uh, bring myself necessarily to have a show of bar napkins and matchbooks, <laughs> uh, backs of receipts, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, back pages of books and any other thing that is flat and relatively clean uh, that you end up uh, sketching and drawing on. Although in my my archives and piles of uh, sketches at my studio, I have a great many pieces of, uh, of note paper, uh, receipts, napkins, often with the very first uh, fledgling inspiration for uh, a great many of these designs, um, just packed out in a uh, dry ballpoint pen on a, on a bar napkin with a Suspicious name. And it's like an airtight vault. Back yes, here. they're all archival. They're kept in glassine envelopes, <laughs> uh, ready for posterity. Is the process always different? I mean, as you talk about different things. I mean. <clears throat> oh, the process uh, in creating these things uh, generally stays within the same mental structure, um, but. Any one piece that's meant to look like another piece can follow an entirely different path to completion. Um, and so they'll often start with the sketch and, and be refined in a great number of ways, but sometimes the path is long and arduous, even though I've tread it a great many times. Right. Uh, and uh, often it's very simple and comes out quickly. Um, I think some of that is due to necessity. Some of it's due to uh, being in the right frame of mind. How many sketches do you think you do before you get to 
Fine art. Oh, the peanut gallery. Thanks for chiming in there, sir. Um, like if the bar napkin was the caveman and the uh, was modern man. From, I would say on an average, there's uh, 25 or 30 different pieces of paper involved in any one, uh, in any one project, not counting the actual print itself. Um, so it, it can take a, a great long time. It can take a great number of explorations, often uh, compartmentalized where you might work on the face of one or a hand of one or just a, a foot or a pattern or something um, in any one particular piece. You might have to revisit it a number of times to decide uh, which tact that you end up wanting to take in the end. And then at the last minute, changing all of it and having to start from scratch. For someone that doesn't know how that process works, like we have here, we have like frame pieces where it starts with the first, very first print and then it goes through. Can you talk about that? How, like the four uh, series thing we have in the window here, how that works? Um, there's not really too much to say about it. Uh, being a person who prints my own work, a lot of that is exploration and understanding about how inks mix together and how something might look as it goes down. And those pieces are more of a product of the, I wouldn't say an experimental process in determining you know, what colors or composition work well, because by that point, the items are done as component pieces, mm -hmm. but those things do help to uh, figure out what works and what's not going to work next time. Uh, and too often in this kind of structured semi-commercial artist uh, vein of producing rock posters as opposed to a purely fine art uh, printmaking uh, where you can explore other options without the, the, the doom of deadline or the, or the uh, input of client uh, joy, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Uh, assembling those things does m help you to uh, revisit the process that got you in one place, especially if you like the end result. Uh, if you don't like the end result, then often it can show you uh, where you went wrong and what not to do again. Even though the very next project you find yourself doing the exact same thing over again in the exact same way and disliking it or enjoying it just as much. So there's no, no solutions are offered by uh, at 90% of the, the quote-unquote mistakes you might make. Like uh, when you do work with a client and you have you know creative creative freedom, do you always? It depends on how different that is, right? Do you find that more in the post work? Because you've worked in advertising and you've done you know TV and stuff too. Yes. So. Like, do you feel the post world has a lot more creative freedom for you, or? You know, it used to, and with that's a whole different subject of the uh, idea that once upon a time, the poster world was uh, inhabited by just as many enthusiasts, as well as people who are enthusiastic about their clients being <coughs> meeting the, the musicians that, they, that the artwork supports. Um, but, more and more, which is rightfully the case, the bands themselves and the organizations involved uh, are taking a more uh, proactive decision-making uh, role in deciding what kind of content they want to represent themselves in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, once upon a time, it was far more up to the artist to give their input and therefore be a part of that creative expression uh, process uh, and kind of provide everybody with one other person's sort of take on music and entertainment and the content of the bands in the same way that perhaps uh, if everybody made uh, audiovisual um, materials all the time, you would have 10,000 homemade videos done for any band uh, that they wouldn't necessarily always have anything to say about. Uh, and coming to the more modern times, the yeah, bands are having a little more to say about how they are represented in their poster format, mm -hmm. which is sometimes good and sometimes it's just not fun. And how does the music affect that to, for you? Like, what does that does it make much difference to what you're doing? Or, I mean, oh, it often does. Yeah, um, I've always tried to work for people who I am a fan of their music and the content, especially the especially the lyrical content and maybe even to a certain extent the the philosophy behind why it is that they produce the stuff that they do. Um, sometimes you're hired to be a, uh, in the manner of an advertising artist, you're hired to create work for hire to their specifications for a particular job, and that's the nature of commercial art as it always is. Um, but when you're left the most free reign to, uh, to imagine the visuals that go along with the imagery in your head of a band that you like, that's when the best work, I think, comes out, and that's also when 
the finished product, if it doesn't meet your expectations, it really doesn't meet your, meet your the expectations that you'd like to have for a uh, uh, for a visual representation of all the stuff that um, music means to you when you actually like it a great deal. Mm -hmm. the, um, I also wonder about your audience. From does that skew what you're doing? Are you do you produce for some, someone? I mean, when, what do you have in mind when you do that? Like your characters, <clears throat> I mean, you're very character driven. Love. Yeah, I'm definitely very figurative. Mm -hmm. I use lots and lots of figures, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, if I could break away from that, that'd be great. But in the end, every building turns into a figure, right. uh, or whatever. Is that what does that come from? I, I don't really have any idea. I don't really like to uh, question too much about the why of some aspects of it. Um, there is certain uh, there's a certain interest in. Um, Symbolism. There's a certain interest in uh, mul you know, depth of meaning to any construction. Uh, as far as I see, the pieces are often uh, as a co construct, being that they're made from different elements, you know, layered specifically together. Um, and the content can be either shallow in its uh, interpretation, or it can be very deep. But it might be only me having that connection to the depths of it. Uh, as far as the audience goes, sometimes you do find yourself trying to appeal to the audience that liked your last piece so much. Uh, and the problem with the modern world of what's called the internet uh, means that you have immediate access to a wide variety of people's opinions about what it is that you're doing. And you can easily get drawn into the idea that um, you might have to or want to or be inclined to appeal to the people who are saying what they like and unfortunately at the same time react to the people who are saying that they don't like something specific about what you've just spent a lot of time doing and then you might consider that your efforts or your intellectual efforts may have been wasted uh, or misguided or perhaps you should think of something else and uh, sometimes a lot of the anguish might come from the idea that uh, uh, someone's forcing you to change your ideas about what you wanted to do in the first place. Uh, and the best thing you can do, I think, in any creative process is not really worry about uh, what it is that people are telling you you're doing wrong. <laughs> Some of that coming from your, your starting to do more painting and, and breaking away from some of the good posters is a reaction to some of that? No, no, it's just I used to do lots of, lots of different forms of artwork. When I had jobs, even though they were artwork jobs, designing for television or being a, an illustrator or art director or even just painting more, I had a lot more avenues to explore on a regular basis and it seems like over the last couple of years that I've been specifically uh, targeting this one particular outlet and I would very much like to remember that uh, getting your fingers covered in ink and getting you know, paintbrushes in your hand and not necessarily having to do this same preparation and execution process uh, should lead to other and more satisfying or at least divergent uh, outlets creatively at any rate.